In this tips and tricks video, we'll explore how we can quickly set up a topology optimization study and generate a high quality and editable BREP solid body through the function driven generative designer role. We begin by selecting a part to redesign, either an existing one or an initial concept. From there, we define the design space, which is the volume that the optimized design must fit without impacting functionality. Once the design space is established, we activate the function-driven generative design app and create a topology optimization study. Our goal in this example is to maximize stiffness, but we could also minimize mass or optimize the design for lower frequencies. A guided workflow on the right side of the screen will walk us through setting up the study. This is especially useful for new or infrequent users to quickly learn how to use the app. The first step is adding partitions, which are regions to preserve during the optimization. To do this, we select the part body and then choose the surfaces to keep and finally define the necessary offsets. We can then repeat this for any other surfaces with different offsets by adding a new partition. Next, we review our preserved regions to ensure everything is correctly captured with our necessary partitions. After that, we define connections which includes rigid connections, springs, pins, bolts, surface contacts, and couplings. In this case, there are no bolts or other connections, so we'll skip this step. Now we apply loads. For this design, we'll apply a force of 4,000 yins in the Y direction and 6,000 yins in the Z direction on the face we are preserving. We then apply any necessary restraints. Here, we'll add a hinge to the upper preserved hole and another hinge restraint between the two lower concentric holes. Finally, we set up load cases to simulate various loading conditions. In this case, we just have the one loading scenario, but if needed, we could include additional loads, restraints, or thermal conditions in the load case management window. With the setup complete, we'll run a preliminary validation to ensure all parameters are defined correctly before running the full topology optimization study. We can automatically mesh or define a custom mesh for more precision. Once the mesh is defined and validated, we're ready to proceed. We can run this validation locally or on the cloud up to 192 cores. Now let's review the preliminary results. We can view stress plots, displacement plots, and other metrics. Everything looks as expected, so we're ready to run the full optimization study. Before starting, we can apply optimization constraints, such as controlling maximum displacement, stress, or thickness, and optimizing for specific manufacturing processes, such as casting, milling, or additive manufacturing. For this symmetric part, we'll apply a shape control constraint along the middle plane. We also will apply a thickness control. The minimum thickness must be at least three times larger than the mesh size. We'll go with a minimum thickness of nine millimeter, and max of 15 millimeters. The mesh from the initial study carries over and we define the mass constraint either as a percentage or a target weight. We specify the number of design cycles and then run the study again either locally or on the cloud with our high performance cloud computing capabilities of up to 192 cores. The software will stop early if the design converges before the full number of cycles. As the study progresses, we can track how the design evolves. After the study runs successfully, we can now create our concept shape from the optimization study. The cutting value can be adjusted manually or through a slider bar, which updates the CAD model live on the screen accordingly. A new feature in the concept shape creation is the ability to quickly filter out small voids and domains to improve the shape result and quickly generate a clean model. It helps to eliminate the need to post-process the geometry after creating the concept shape. We can output a subdivision surface which will give us an editable BREP solid. This is a key feature of the function-driven generative design app as it now allows us to have editable geometry. We are no longer limited to an uneditable mesh like other software generates for these types of studies. Once we've created our final concept shape, we'll validate it against structural constraints. The input parameters carry over, so we just run the validation. The results will confirm if the design meets deflection and stress requirements. With this initial concept completed, 
we can generate additional configurations with different optimization constraints or output our design to the additive manufacturing role to begin manufacturing this part.